One of the most powerful features of Eye in the Sky Screener is its advanced filtering capabilities, which allow you to take over 6,000 stocks and filter them down to a narrow focus list that you can then look for opportunities in the market to trade. So let's get started uh, and look at this feature in detail. Once you've set up your filter criteria, you can save them in this My Filters box so that you can use one click of the mouse and retrieve them at a future time without having to specify them each time. And as you can see, I've defined a bottom reversals filter criteria that consists of patterns, full stochastics, price characteristics, volume characteristics, and there's some other things as well on the other screens. So once you've defined these things, you don't have to do them over again which is a time-saving feature. But let's go through each one of the filtering uh, criteria in the screen so they get a feel for the power that's embedded in this portion of the software. The first thing that you have at your disposal is patterns. You can se uh, select as many of these patterns from the box as you want. And for me, I like to trade from bottom reversal patterns. So I've chosen all of the uh, patterns that reflect a downward trending stock that's ready to reverse and go up. So you can use your control key or your shift key on your keyboard to go ahead and select multiple items from that list. Next thing over is the candlesticks. That represents the latest candlestick for the last daily period that you imported. So if I imported today, it would represent yesterday's candlestick. And you can filter based on these types of candlesticks. So you're, if you're looking for some kind of reversal candlestick, you can use dojis or gravestone dojis, depending on your trading style. And you can select more than one in this box as well. Next thing over is full stochastics. This is calculated on a 1433, and you've got both the K percent and the D percent indicators to filter on. You can either use ranges or you can leave one of the ends open. The next item in the list is the next earnings report, and this means that within the next X number of days, you'll expect an earnings report to come out. So if we use this capability and we select three from this list, that would show only the stocks that have an earnings report scheduled for the next three days. I'm going to not set all of these because if I set every single filter criteria, we'd have zero results in the in the result set. So I'm just going to kind of drop down the boxes and show you what the values are. Um, another cool feature of the software is that if you don't like the values in this next earnings report box, you can change those. Say you're not interested in the number six being in that box and you want to remove it. What you do is you right click on that box and choose change values. And you highlight the number six, hit the delete key, and hit save. And it's going to clear your existing filtering criteria when you do that. So uh, be prepared to do that before you start filtering things so that you don't kind of step on yourself when you're changing those. But if you look now, you'll notice that in the next earnings report box, as I click on that, the number six is gone. You can also add values as well in that screen that popped up. So you can cater this to your specific needs. Don't you get uh, specific values by default when you install the software, but feel free to customize all of these list boxes, all these drop-down boxes, so that you only see the data that's important to you. So that's a real cool feature of the software. The next uh, item that we have is a price range. So if you, ch you choose to trade stocks in a certain price range, you can set the bottom and top value of that range. And again, you can change all the values in all these drop-down boxes. So if you have bottom range or a top range that's missing here, you can add it and you can get rid of the extraneous ones. Next we have volume, percent greater than average. That means what is today's volume compared to the average volume of that stock? And then you have minimum daily volume. So if you're looking for stocks that have at least 50,000 shares traded on a daily basis, you can go ahead and select that from the box or whatever values. Let's move over to the exponential moving average and the single, or excuse me, the simple moving average. Uh, box here and you have the distance of the current price from those indicators. So if you wanted to find stocks that were 1% away from their 20-day simple moving average, you would select one from this box and it would go filter down based on those. And all of this filtering criteria combines together. So the more things you select up here, the more it's going to narrow your result set. So you could you could specify more than one of these. The crossover is the distance in percentage from one indicator to the other. So this first box I have highlighted here, 20 and 50 day crossover. If I was looking for a crossover situation between these two uh, moving averages, I could choose two. And that would indicate that the 20 day simple moving average is 2% away from the 50 day simple moving average. And that's how that works. 
It works exactly the same for the ex exponential moving averages, so you would select the same values from those boxes. Let's move on to the next criteria, insider trading. You can filter your uh, result set based on the type of insider trading going on. So let's say you're looking for stocks that have had an insider trading buy transaction within the last, let's say, through, uh, five days. And if we go over to the insider trading tab here, we'll see what those exact transactions are. And let's say that we want to see only the transactions that are over $25,000. That'll restrict it even further. And say you want them only by insiders of the company. Now, insiders means people who are directly employed by the company. Institutions, of course, are external organizations that hold stock in the company. So CEOs, directors, that kind of thing will be the insiders. And there is a distinction there in that box. So you could separate it even down to that granular level. The next thing we have on the screen is insider ownership. You can uh, specify a range of percentage of insider ownership. And as well, you can uh, specify a percentage of institutional ownership. Next, we have ratings, which is basically analyst opinions. You could pick when the uh, upgrade or downgrade was issued within the last so many days. You could uh, specify what type of upgrade or downgrade it was, if it was a buy to hold ratings change. And then next over here, we have MSN Stock Scouter rating, which is imported from the MSN Stock Scouter website for all the stocks. So if I clear some of these other filters, because at this point we only have three stocks we're dealing with at this point with all the filtering we've done, let me clear the filters, go back over to ratings, and let's choose 10 for stock scouter rating. We'll get only the stocks that have an MSN stock scouter rating of 10. And that narrows our list down there. We'll wait for it to refresh here. It might take a second. There we go, 93 stocks with a 10 rating with MSN stock scouter. And you could go through those. Let's move on to the next tab, which is Bollinger Bands. And we have calculated Bollinger Bands for both simple moving average of 20 days and an exponential moving average of 20 days. So you could, you could compare the upper bound or lower bound of the Bollinger Band to the current price, or you could look for a crossover between the, diff the two bands with the crossover box. And these are all percentages, just like the exponential moving average uh, boxes were. Next tab is highs and lows. You have the 52-week and the 50-day high and low to compare the current price to. You've got quarter over quarter growth for the stock. You have sector and industry that you can select, and you can actually select more than one in either of these boxes. You'll notice when I select something in the sector that it narrows the industry box based on that sector that you have selected. And it'll be a uh, aggregate of the multiple sectors you have selected showing what industries are within them. So if I selected consumer goods and financial, you'll also see like asset management show up alongside the consumer good industries that are inside that sec the consumer goods uh, sector. Next thing over is the country. You can filter by country. So say you're interested in Brazilian stocks. You could choose Brazil from that uh, box. And I don't see any coming up there with our other criteria. So let's go with Chinese stocks and we should probably get some of those. And apparently not. Well, you would have to clear your other filter value. I'll go ahead and do that real quick just to show you that it is working. We go back over to country. We've cleared out all of our other criteria. And you, you have to kind of be care uh, too careful to not specify too much criteria or you're going to not get any results. So if we choose purely Chinese stocks with no other filtering criteria, we'll find that we have 228 of those stocks, and then you can start applying other filtering criteria to whittle it down as well. Uh, the gains and losses, I'll cover that in a different video, but that's when you've imported your realized gains and losses from your brokerage, and then you can actually look at those for different time periods, but we'll get into that in a different video. That's a little beyond the scope of this video. And finally, we have the custom tab. Anything that I haven't mentioned so far, that you can do, you can do on this tab. You can take any piece of information in the system, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of it, and you can use any type of operator against that field. So let's just do an example. Let's say that we want a float short that is less than 5%. So we've chosen the operator less than and put in the value of 5%. And so this is going to take the stocks that we have and apply that filter criteria after you leave the row. So that's whittled down the 227, I think it was, down to 154. And you can continue to add criteria in the screen, as many as you want. And then when you're done, you can just choose this Create New option. 
And I'm just going to call this demonstration because it's kind of, we've cleared some criteria, we've added criteria, and I think right now it's Chinese and float short less than five. But you could be very specific in the name there and then click save. And from this point forward, all you need to do to bring up that criteria is to simply select it from the box and uh, it'll load that criteria. So that's a pretty quick uh, wrap up of all the filtering capabilities available in the software. It's very powerful. It allows you to focus in on the stock opportunity, the trade opportunities that match your trading style. And I think it'll save you a lot of time. So be sure to check out the uh, free 30 day trial and, and try it and see if it applies to your needs. Uh, there is no credit card necessary for that. You simply email me through the website by clicking on that 30-day free trial button, and I send you a free demo key for 30 days, and you get to try the full version of the software for 30 days to make sure you like it, you use it, it saves you time, it makes you, it allows you to make more money because you're more productive and spending less time doing research, and uh, be sure to check that out, and thank you very much for your time.